Welcome to part 3 in our new game development series focused on the 3D Flax game engine. In this video, we are going to continue developing our character controller scripts, by having the player turning correctly and smoothly in the direction of the movement. We will also integrate the jump animation from the visual scripting environment. Finally, we will fine-tune some elements of the movement and the camera follow script created in the previous episode. As a bonus, we will start to configure slightly the environment. First, as always in our channel, let's see what we have up to now. Actually, still not much. We can move the player around with the camera following it. We are not yet able to turn in the direction of the movement and although we can jump, there is no visual feedback. So, we have a lot of things to do, let's jump into the actual tutorial. The first thing to do is to go to the player script and start implementing the character rotation to face the movement. For that, we will need a couple of new variables. A target angle for the rotation, that will hold where we are rotating to. A rotation speed, at which the character will turn. A reference to the camera, as to take into account the camera reference when applying the rotation of the character, and always rotation in the correct direction independently on looking into or away of the camera. On the on update function, let's save in the target angle, what is the angle where we are heading off by applying the a102 function, based on the movement vector. Since the function returns a result in radians, we will convert it to degrees by multiplying the result by the conversion factor math radians to degrees. Now, that we know where we are turning to, let's change the rotation of the player. In Flax Engine, we use the local orientation parameter to set the new rotation that we get by applying the quaternion Euler on the y-axis of the angle calculated in the previous instruction. Let's multiply that value by the turn speed variable to control the speed at which we will be turning, and time delta time to have it independent of the frame rate. Let's check if it is making our character turning. Yes. We can see that our player turns. Although the rotation is very abrupt because we are rotating in each frame the character based on the value of controls. We need to smooth it out. Also, we can see that as soon as we release the controls, the character resets back to be looking forward, and don't stay rotated to the current direction of movement. Let's go back to the script. First thing is to avoid resetting on each frame the movement vector. Move the definition of the vector to the class level. And let's go to the on update function and apply the rotation only if the movement vector is different from zero. If we check it, we can see, that now, our player keeps its final rotation. Let's smooth out the rotation. For this, 
we will need a new float variable named smooth damping that will hold the value at which we are going to smooth the rotation. In the onUpdate function, after the calculation of the target angle, let's create a new quaternion variable that will be initialized with the desired rotation. Then, to the player rotation, we will apply a quaternion spherical linear interpolation or slurp. This will blend the rotation between the current rotation and the desired rotation, using an interval of time defined by the variable smooth damping. This will cause the character to turn now in fractions of the difference between the current orientation and the desired one calculated based on the current controls. Let's run the game. And we can see that the player is now turning very smoothly in the direction that we are heading. We can play around with the value of the smooth damping and the turn speed value, to get to a feel that we like. If we want now to make the rotation independent on where the player orientation in relation to the camera, let's make a quick calculation that will make our rotation independent of it. There are several ways it can be done but this is the easiest and fastest way to do it. In the instruction where we calculate the desired rotation that we want, based on the movement direction, let's subtract to the target angle the value of the Y rotation of the camera and, that we can get through the parameter Euler angles. What this calculation is doing, is basically to take into consideration the angle at which the camera is looking at the character and how the character is looking at the camera. There so, we will turn always to the right or the left with the same controls independently on if we are going toward the camera or away from the camera. Let's run to check. In this case, we will be only able to check the result on your version of the game. But the character is turning correctly in the right direction when going toward or away from the camera. Time now to go to the jump animation. As done in the previous video, duplicate one of the existing animations and name it Monster Jump. Double click to access the import proprieties. If working with the same character, the animation for the jump is the number 9. If you have doubts and want to check. Create a new animation graph and import the animation into it. Connect the animation to the animation output. Now if you change the animation index in the propriety dialog box, you can check the animations being executed. Let's add the jump animation into the animation graph. Double click on it, edit the locomotion state and add a new state named jump. Double click to open and add the new jump animation. Connect it to the state output.
create the transition between the idle and the walk states toward the new state. Click on any of them to edit. To define the transition, we need a new parameter as jumping of type pool. Let's drag it to the canvas and connect it to the transition output. In our case, since we are editing the walking to jump transition, we can connect directly the two nodes. Let's replicate this step for all the transitions created. Take into consideration, that when moving out from the jump state we need to invert the value of is jumping with a not node, as we want to leave it when the is jumping is set to false. We can preview the new state machine by click on the parameters and check on the preview window results. It seems that we have everything correctly set. So, our jump is being controlled by a visual script, so let's keep the animation control also within the visual script. This way, we will be able to keep approaching both systems in our tutorials. In the content folder, double-click on the jump visual script. To be able of controlling the jump, we need to add two new boolean parameters. But, if you remember the previous video, you know that there is a bug in the current version of Flax Engine that doesn't allow you to add more parameters after you have added an unsigned integer. So, this means that we need first to remove the mask parameter, and then add the can jump and is jumping boolean variables. Once added, let's add again the mask parameter. When you delete a parameter, all the references are lost, so we need to go to the function check is grounded and in the sphere cast node recover the mask get parameter. Once done, let's go to the on update. And after the if node select all the nodes and cut them and paste them somewhere in the canvas, as we will use it again in the jump function. Now, drag a new connection, from the true output of the if, into the canvas, 
and set the set parameter. For the parameter select can jump and set it to true. This will tell the function jump that we are going to create that the player can jump. Now, let's create the function jump. In the right pane, click on the new function button. Name it jump. From the output of the function drag a new connection into the canvas and create a new if node. Create a new boolean and node, and connect it to the condition entry of the if node. From the parameters section on the right pane, drag the is grounded and can jump parameters into the canvas near the end node. Connect each of them to the entry points of the node. From the if node yes output drag a new connection and create a node to set the parameter can jump to false. and then continue to create a new node to set parameter as jumping to true. Paste the add force nodes that we cut previously and connect the add force to the last node that we created for the is jumping parameter. Now, let's deal with stopping to jump. For the first if node at the beginning of the jump function, and from the false output, let's drag a new connection into the canvas to create a new if node. Now, create a new boolean and node. Connect its output condition to the if node. Connect to it the get is grounded output to the a entry of the end node. From the right pane. Drag the can jump parameter into the canvas and connect it to the B entry in the end node. So, if the character is grounded now, but was jumping, then this means that the player has just landed from a jump in there so, we can set the is jumping to false. Let's now create the function that will trigger the jump animation. So, let's create a new function and name it animation, although later on, we will change it to jump animation. From the function start node, drag a new connection into the canvas and create a new if node. Drag the is jumping parameter from the right pane and connect it to the if node. Add a new node actor reference, and in the type field, select the animated model. This will get the reference to the animated model where we are animating the character. Right click on the canvas and create a new set parameter value node. 
be sure to select the one with a string parameter that we will use to identify the animation parameter. Connect it to the actor reference node. Connect the output of the node get is jumping into the value entry of the set parameter value node. Now, let's integrate everything. Go to the onUpdate function and after the check is grounded function node, add the jump function. Connect both. Connect the output of the jump function to the if node that check is grounded was connected to. Now, let's add the animation function. At this stage, we can see that we are not able to include it. This is because animation must be a reserved name to systems elements. Go to the function area in the right pane and rename the function to jump animation. Connect the jump function node output to the jump animation and then jump animation to the following if node. Let's run the game and see if it is working as expected. Yes, we can move in turn and we can jump with the character jumping. The overall result is not very good, as the jump animation used in the player, has some sort of anticipation and we have not yet discovered how to edit the animation itself. We will address it in a future episode. Let's connect back our camera follow, as it has disconnected from the character, and let's adjust the offset parameters a bit to get a good view of the player. Let's try it. The camera is following correctly the character, but we are having some jittering in the movement. We have been trying to fine-tune some elements in the game, but the movement is still not as smooth as it should. Let's try to modify the movement function, and use directly the rigid body linear velocity.
For that, on the on update function, let's remove the add force instruction. Replace it with a new one where we set linear velocity to its value plus the movement vector multiplied by speed. You may wonder why we are not multiplying in this case by time delta time, but this is because when we are manipulating the linear velocity the physics engine already manages that frame adaptation. Let's define speed at the beginning of the class as a float type. Let's go back to the on update and remove the plus sign before the equal. Let's also move it from the on update method to the on fix it update, as it is better to run physics functions like we are doing now. Before setting the linear velocity, let's also guarantee that the gravity will still be applied so let's add to the movement y, the current y-axis of the rigid body linear velocity. Before running the game let's change somewhat the level. and let's create some blocks that could be buildings. And let's change the ground material to a checkered texture that we will put the link in the description.
let's run the game. Now, it is easier to see that we are moving, and we can jump. Not sure, but the movement seems to have less jittering affecting it although we will have to take a deeper look into it. Let's finish now. In the next episode, we will start to introduce the generation of prefabs to see how we can generate enemies or fire projectiles at them. We will also start to look into the UI system following the request from one of the members of our growing community. We have to say, that we are very happy with the community and would like to thank you very much all for the growth that we have been receiving over the last weeks. We hope that you have liked this video. If it has been the case, consider subscribing, giving a like, and clicking on the notification button. If you have any questions, problems, or comments, don't hesitate in putting a comment and we will answer as fast as we could. See you in the next video game developers.